and welcome back to Jeff Green. I'm getting live at the Intercontinental Hotel. What a guest we have with us today. She's only 20 years old and she's a person with albinism. We have come to learn and that's a good lesson, but what an inspiration. She is Gracie Nzomo, second year student at USIU studying psychology. She wants to start her own psychological firm, whatever they call that, sometime down the line. She's smart, she's brilliant. And yes, it's what we talk about when we talk about the future of Kenya. And we're also joined by Dr. Dr. Prabha Choksi. She's the founder of the Choksi Albinism Foundation. She's been working with people with albinism for the last seven years. Her specialty, ophthalmology. She's been doing that for 37 years. What is ophthalmology? Beats me. <laughs> <laughs> ophthalmology is a, is a eye specialist. Uh -huh. Why, why can't they just say that? <laughs> no, but you see, there are a lot of, there are three caters of people who work for the eyes. People who are called opticians who give you glasses. There are optometrists who can actually maybe give you, uh, diagnose some conditions that you have in the eyes and all that. So opticians might do three years after A-levels. Uh, optometrists do four years after A-levels. A person like ophthalmologist becomes a doctor first. And does now specializes in, uh, right. specializes in uh, treating eye conditions, uh, doing eye operations. And that's nine, nine years after A-levels. Wow. And that I finished in 1977. Is that right? Yes. So tell me something. Obviously people with albinism, like Gracie, the eyes are the big thing, right? I mean, they are badly affected by it, aren't they? Actually, I think uh, with albinism, it is a totally misunderstood condition, especially in Africa. Albinism is there all over the world. So one in 20,000 children uh, are born uh, with albinism. Uh, it's also in nature. You can sometimes see an albino lion, you can see an albino ra rat, you can see an albino, uh, albino crocodile, anything. Any animal also can be an albino. When the two parents, the father and the mother, carry the gene of albinism, there are uh, one in four chances of the child being born with, uh, with albinism. So all the people with albinism do have uh, parents who are black. And if they get married to somebody who's not a carrier of the gene, they can have normal children. So this is what is really misunderstood. But somehow in Africa, I don't know, because of the, uh, because of the maybe the pride in black color or something, a, a child which is born uh, white in a black family uh, is actually uh, taken uh, in a very different way. People think like it's a curse. What's this for the mothers of the ch uh, the children with uh, mothers uh, who have born a child with albinism because all the concentration in all these years in the whole of Africa is uh, concentrating only on the skin and the hair which is you know like white skin and blonde hair and all that. People actually forget that albinism is a condition of the eye. Eye is the primary morbidity which, uh, which affects the people with, uh, with albinism. You know, so I'll uh, yeah. cut you off right there real quick and say Gracie has green eyes, if you will, right? A lot of people with albinism have pink eyes, yes? Actually, in albinism, uh, the, 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 the structure of the eye that gives rise to the color of the eyes is called the iris. And in the iris uh, and the choroid behind, the pigment melanin is absent. So melanin is uh, absent in the skin, it's absent in the hair. What most important is absent in the, in the eyes. So now these people uh, have uh, something like a reddish reflex because there's nothing to protect, uh, uh, protect the reflex, red reflex from the back of the eye coming. So they have a red reflex. Uh, because uh, there is a, uh, there's no pigment in the, in the retina of the eyes, the eyes don't learn to fixate. So if you look carefully at the eyes, the eyes have pendular movements and yeah. this is what we call nystagmus. And Gracie's eyes are dancing all the time. Yeah, the all the time. Is that what and it is? Yeah, this is how I it is. I she's looking at me funny. 100% hundred, hundred people with albinism will have nystagmus. Because, hundred, uh, uh, say that again, why? Uh, because of the non-formation of the fixation reflex, you know, the fixation, eyes learn to fixate, uh, the two eyes learn to work together. But uh, with people with albinism, that fixation reflex is uh, not developed because of lack of pigment in okay. the eyes. Uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, Gracie, when you were growing up, did you ever ask your mother, did you ever ask her, why are you and your sister different from them, from your folks? Did you ask her? No, I don't know why I didn't ask her, but being a firstborn, you you have better things to think about then. Because I really didn't notice I was different. At home, I was just treated normally and I got all the love that I had. Did your sister I, ask? No, I remember my mom told me when my sister was born and she was brought home, the first thing I said was like, was, she's like me. <laughs> That's the first thing I said when yeah. I saw her, she's like me. Yeah. So I don't know how it would have been if she was, if she had pigment and she was black, so <laughs> I never asked. 
Yeah. I just got to know later. Doctor, if both parents have the pigment, uh, the, the DNA, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. will every child be in, uh, have albinism? No. no. It, it's usually one in four, but sometimes it can happen very rarely, like Grace, mm -hmm. the two sisters, both of them are born uh, yeah. with albinism. But if you have a family of six, seven children, you'll see only one or two have albinism. Not all of them mm -hmm. will have albinism. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How did, why did you get involved? Uh, actually, it's a, it's a long story. Okay, into, uh, <laughs> Yeah, in 2007, I was being awarded uh, uh, an award uh, of excellence from the Ophthalmic Society of East Africa for outstanding contribution to eye care in East Africa. This award was uh, was very precious uh, for me. Or at, and sometimes I think when you get these type of awards, you want to prove to yourself that you know what you're doing is uh, uh, what you're doing it deserves that sort of an award. Just that year, uh, a small child was brought to me uh, who was adopted by one of my patients. The biological mother had dumped him on a Latin pit. The new life home had uh, taken uh, this child up, and then uh, my patient adopted, and she brought because people do get worried about uh, the eyes. You know, the eyes look so peculiar. So she brought them to me. I said, let the child grow up. And the child had yeah, an albino child. Uh, the child was an albino child, yeah. So there was a story about her in true life. You can't say that word, by the way. You can't say albino. I don't know. Sometimes some of these people get very much affected, but yeah, it's, it was an albino child. And uh, <laughs> you said it again. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and uh, so um, the eyes. Were, there was a story about her in True Love magazine. Now True Love magazine approached me to say write about something what happens to people with albinism. And a doctor of 30 years, I started reading about what happens, and I was surprised. Even in the books, it was written that most of them are like legally blind. They don't see 660. And uh, so I. I, I I started thinking because during the photo shoot there was a girl called Sikhan Embura, very beautiful albino girl. So uh, I told her, why don't you come to my office and uh, we, we see how much you see. And when she came to my office, I was actually surprised that she could, act, she had enough vision that she could actually drive. You know, she had 6-12 vision uh, in both the eyes. So it was a remarkably good vision. So I, I told her I would like to see more patients. And that conference where I was going to receive the award, I said, let me present my first 10 people with albinism. Isaac Maura, your present entry, was among the first people in that group. Is that right? Yeah, Mumbi Bogi was there in the magazine, but she did not uh, uh, did not feature in my first uh, 10, uh, uh, 10 patients. And I was actually surprised that out of these 10, eight could see so much better with glasses, which they had never worn. They had never gone to an eye specialist before. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Earlier on, you were telling me Dr. Choksi is like your mother. Yeah, she's a mentor. Go on. Um, her services are free for people with albinism. She checks their eyes for free. We also give them glasses for free. And she just takes, tries to really encourage them. She's an inspiration. Yeah. Do a lot of people with albinism come, do they? Yes. Uh, do they yes. take advantage of this? Yes, they do. <laughs> Sometimes it's too much because she sets aside a day just to see people with albinism. Every Tuesday, our office is full of people with albinism coming for eye checkups, school fees, because we also have a sponsorship program. We are currently sponsoring almost 50 children. Wow. Yeah, so we have a lot of issues to sort out. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Choksi, uh, I'm not sure a lot of viewers are wondering right now, but how many, what's the percentage of people with albinism in Kenya? No, it's really very difficult because previously what used to happen is mothers used to hide their children with albinism uh, and uh, because in the society they don't accept the families with, uh, uh, with children with albinism. Sometimes it really pained my heart to know that some blind schools where these children were uh, uh, going during the holidays, the parents came to take the other black children, uh, um, um, blind black children, but never came to take the albino children. So albino child, even during the holidays, stayed in the hostel and stayed in the uh, boarding and never went. Uh, went home. So really it's a very difficult uh, thing and previously because you know many, there were lots of myths that were associated with albinism that if you uh, if you're in sunlight for too long you might actually become black or get pigment and uh, actually many people actually got cancer. I think many died before also and uh, when I came uh, came into the program seven years ago, it was really a very serious situation because BBC and all that we heard news about the killings of albino children, yeah. albino people in Tanzania and many parts of Africa. It's not only that, yeah. yeah. 
Then they have another very uh, uh, this that the body parts of albinism is money. A hand of albino was selling for five thousand dollars in those days when I came into the program. Yeah. Then if you had a cancer of some organ, if you got that organ from an albino, your cancer would get cured. If you have HIV, if you are intimate with an albino person, your HIV will get cured. But what really shocked me was that without taking the children to an uh, eye specialist or an ophthalmologist, seventy to eighty percent of the children were thrust into blind schools. So that all the children in Tika School for the Blind, Likoni School for the Blind, Kitui School for the Blind, you go and let me tell you this, Africa is the only continent which sends its albino children to blind schools, which actually I want to ask uh, the viewers that who decides if the child has to go to blind school? Is it the parents? Is it the society? Is it the teachers? Or is it is it an eye specialist? None of this. We are finishing 650 albino uh, persons in my clinic. I are finishing 650 albinism people. And out of them, I'm telling you, maybe I'm 640. I'm the first eye specialist who has actually seen how much they see. And I'm surprised. According to my, my own observation, 99 cents, 99% yeah. do not come in the bracket of is legal blindness. Is it our blindness. ignorance or what is it? I think more than the ignorance, it is the shunning of the people with albinism by the society. You know, they can actually accept a totally blind child, but they don't accept a person blind uh, with albinism. Crazy, yeah. isn't that a bit unfair? Yes, it is. Hmm? Yeah. So that's a, that's what we are trying to change. Yeah. Just are people are getting yeah. people are getting enlightened, and when you go around, because you know, in the past, people with albinism are hidden. They are really hidden. So when you walk around and people notice you, you try to create awareness everywhere you go. Yeah. And then they see you functioning as a normal person, they go and spread the word and I saw this person, maybe they even tell you there's a person I know but they were kept at home. Like bring them out, bring them out. Yeah. If someone with albinism or someone with a child who has albinism is watching right now, what do you tell them about this kid if they've hidden them in a closet in a room somewhere in the back? What do you tell them? That they are sitting on potential because the child is just normal she can achieve or he can achieve anything that he wants to achieve which is the right support and the love yeah so just yeah. bring him up as a normal child he's a person he's a human being mm. yeah dr chuck see where does greasy get all this confidence from because you know growing up and people like i would see who had albinism they don't have this kind of confidence they don't have this kind of energy I think probably you did not really meet many of them are already there. You have Mumbi Gogi and I think hats off to her parents, not Mumbi Gogi and hats off to her parents as well. Because um, uh, they actually took Mumbi Gogi to normal school. It, uh, in the time when 80% of the children were going to blind school, the 20% people went to normal school. She went to London School of Economics, studied law and today she is our high court judge on her own merit and not that. And for Grace actually, you know, when she came from, um, she just finished her O levels and came. Um, actually, her father lost his, his, his uh, job as well that time, so there was a big balance for uh, fees for her. That, is, that was the time my second, I have uh, had uh, two uh, program officers before, Josephine Mangeshi and Anne Bui. And I think, you know, I also give a lot of credit to them because sometimes in those days, parents, you know, even the child to be brought to my clinic for an eye checkup, parents used to be scared. They used to think that they are being kidnapped or something. So that time, my previous program officers would say, no, we will give ourselves up if somebody comes for kidnapping. Hmm. Then uh, that's how we actually got the people to, uh, to uh, come to us. So Grace uh, came just at the right time when I was looking. She was very young. I never thought she was even capable of doing. But I said, yes, I'll pay your fees. That was, I think, balance of 55,000 in her school, which I gave her a check. Then I said, you work for me. We, uh, you was, uh, you yeah. did that little bit from uh, whatever little I gave you. And that's how. And the rest but has and is and history. Okay, let me ask you real quick before we go to the break. Um, I was teasing you earlier on that I'm 49 years old, right? I've heard growing up that people with albinism don't live that long. Is that also another misconception? It's a big misconception because we do live. We do live. It's only that maybe um, they say we never die because we've never seen some <laughs> an obituary of a person with albinism. Yeah. But you know, the myth is that maybe our bones are potent. They can make some witchcraft, something out of it. So we don't, they don't, if a person with albinism passes away, they don't put his, his or her obituary in the papers. Maybe the witch doctors will track him mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. And so pick up the bones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh my. yeah, but we we have normal lifespan. We're just normal human beings. It's just the melanin which you don't have. Everything else is intact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which brings me to the question I asked you before the last break: Do you have a boyfriend? Okay. Does I not answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I think after, after the show she will. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you thought I'd forgotten, right? 
You found yeah, it, huh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> We're going to take another break, come back, and you have something to show us, some chart, some uh, some diagrams or something. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, Gracie just hit the nail on the head. They are just normal human beings like the rest of, of us. Of course, we have patients who are uh, 65 years old, some are 70 years old, who have... Eight children, thirteen grandchildren. And we have got so photographs of them. Black children. Yeah, black. Yeah, all black. Yeah. That's the thing. You see, these are the. This is the only generation which has albinism. Their parents are black. The children are black. Uh -huh. They are the only ones. Unless two people with albinism get married, then all hundred percent children will be. Uh, uh, will have albinism. Will have both carry the gene. Yeah. Correct. It's all in the gene. Correct. Yeah. I'm learning a lot today, and I hope our viewers are too. It's fantastic. They better. Excellent. They better. <laughs> Gracie has spoken. At Gracie Maya, that's M A Y A, at Craig Jeff, the hashtag is people with albinism. Let's learn more. That's the only way we can move forward as a nation, is if we learn to accept who we are. Look at 20 year old Gracie here. He's definitely accepted. Make us all proud to be Kenyan. JKL takes yet another break. Plenty more coming up after the break. Back in a moment. You refuse to answer my question. Yeah. <laughs>